The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. I'm Karen, and today we're gonna to be reviewing resistor codes by making the resistance substitution box. Solder along with me by getting your own kit. You can find the link in the description below. I'm really excited about this kit. I think it's gonna be super useful in prototyping circuits. Let's take a look inside. We've got the case with four screws, a tube of solder, our PCB, our bag of resistors, a red and black wire with matching red and black alligator clips, our switch, two 12 position switches with washers, nuts, and knobs. Once assembled, the resistance box can be used as an array of resistors. It ranges from 10 ohms to one mega ohm. It has two knobs. If switched to the left, ohm, the leads provide the resistance of the setting of the left knob. If switched to the right, kilo ohm, the leads provide the resistance of the setting of the right knob. If you look at the PCB inside the box, you can see there is a place for a resistor of each value as seen on the cover. We'll start with populating the resistors on the PCB and we'll start with the left knob. Now, the manual for this kit is actually really great. For each resistor, it tells you its placement on the PCB, its value, and its color code. But we wanna practice our color codes, so we're gonna not pay attention to that, and we're just gonna do this manually. Now, the manual tells us that R1 is the 10 ohm resistor, so we're gonna start there. R1 is a 10 ohm resistor, so we need a resistor with brown, black, black. Here it is. Let's solder it on. R2 is a 22 ohm resistor. We need a resistor with red, red, black. There we go. R3 is a 47 ohm resistor, yellow, purple, black. Here it is. R4 is a 100 ohm resistor. We need a resistor with brown, black, brown. Here we go. Okay, R5, 220 ohms. Twos are red, so we need red, red, and for that zero, brown. Aha, not orange, orange, brown, red, red, brown. R6 is a 330 ohm resistor. Three is orange, so we need orange, orange, brown. Aha, there it is. All right, that'll do it for knob one. For the second knob, we'll start with the resistor. We'll look at the colors to figure out its value, then find its place on the PCB. Now remember for the second knob, it's all kilo ohms, so we're adding two or three zeros to all of these values because they're in the thousands. All right, let's start with this one. This resistor is orange, orange, yellow. So we've got three, three plus four zeros. So that's 330 kilo ohms. So these start at R13. So we got 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So our 330 kilo ohm resistor goes on R21.
Let's do this one next. We've got yellow, purple, orange. So that's four, seven, plus three zeros. So 47 kilo ohms. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this should be R17. All right, next one, we have brown, black, green. One zero plus five zeros for a total of six zeros. So that's one mega ohm. Ooh, that's our biggest one. So that should be R24. Next, we'll solder on the single pole double throw switch. It goes on SW3. Next, we're gonna solder on our 12 position switches. Now they each have a little tab here. You're gonna wanna use some pliers to fold that down and that tab is gonna go on the left when these are positioned on the PCB. Next, we need our wire. We need to connect the selector pin of the 12 position switches to the single pole double throw switch. So we're gonna use a bit of this wire to make that connection. We're gonna trim our wire and solder it to the selector pin here and then up to the pins of the single pole double throw switch there. So this one will go here, this one will go here. It doesn't really matter which color you use on which side. I'm gonna fold my wiper pins down with my pliers to make them a little bit easier to solder to. Next, we'll take the leftover black and red wire. We'll strip the ends and place them through the holes labeled black and red on the front of the PCB and solder them on the back. Next, we'll tie these two wires in a knot as close to the board as possible and then feed the ends through the hole in the faceplate. The knot should help prevent the wires from being pulled off the PCB during use of the box. Next, we'll put the washer and nut on the 12 position selector switches. You can use a wrench or pliers to tighten these, or you can just do it finger tight. Next, we'll strip the ends of the wires and then take the clip of the corresponding color, pull off the rubber covering and insert it onto the wire. Insert the stripped end of the wire onto the end of the clip and fold down the tabs. Replace the rubber cover on the clip if you like. Before we screw the faceplate onto the box, we want to add the knobs onto our selector switches. Notice how the knob has a white line. We want to make sure this is pointing at whichever resistor is selected. Now that we've confirmed that all of the resistors work, let's screw the faceplate onto the box. Since the box acts as a pass-through to the resistors, it doesn't require any power, so battery's not included because battery's not required. Cool! Thanks for soldering along with me. I hope you find the resistance substitution box helpful, or at least you got some practice in decoding those resistor codes. If there are any other kits you'd like to solder along with me, tell me which one on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!
Yeah.